Hey, what's up guys, it's Nirav here for Android Authority, and yes, in front of us here is Cortana, which is Microsoft's voice assistant and their answer to Google Now on Android and Siri on the Apple iPhone. If you've been following AndroidAuthority.com, you'll have read that Cortana is coming to Android. And today, we've actually had a first look at Cortana for Android, thanks to the leak. Now, in front of us here is the Galaxy S6 Edge, and we've got Microsoft's Cortana running on it. It's not the official version of the app, so there may be some bugs, and it may not have the smooth performance that we expect from the final app. But yeah, Cortana for Android is here, albeit in leaked form. So we thought we'd bring you a quick hands-on and also look at how it compares to Google Now. Right, so we'll kick things off with Cortana itself on the Galaxy S6 Edge. So when you first install Cortana for Android, it asks you to sign in with your Microsoft account, which is your Hotmail account or any other email address you've got registered with, my, with a Microsoft account, but also asks you your name. And we'll touch on that later on. Let's first give you a look at the app itself. When you do launch Cortana, you'll see it's got a very Google Now-like interface. It gives you cards. So here we've got today's trending topics, recommended news, top stories, and the latest in health news. We've got the weather, and there's a lot more. And what you'll see here is, a lot of this is all powered by Bing. Whilst obviously Google Now is, whilst obviously Google powers Google Now, you'd make sense that, Microsoft, that Cortana is powered by Bing. From the app, you can customize all of this as well, which we'll touch on now. First, let's swipe in from the left, and you can see here we've got an interface. So you can see we've got options for home, notebook, reminders, and feedback. And obviously a big tag that says, that reminds you that actually Cortana is still in beta mode. Let's go into the notebook, because everyone has one of these, and it's actually what really makes Cortana unique. The notebook allows you to tell Cortana more about yourself, and by doing so, it gives Cortana more information to make itself more useful for you. I think that sounds just about simple enough. I'll show you what I mean. If we go into eat and drink, it tells you, would you like to leave the eat and drink cards on? Would you like top recommendations from Foursquare? Restaurant recommendations. But it also asks you more information about your preferences. So in this case, how far are you willing to go? Well, I'm only willing to go within driving distance. Go back, tap add, and then it knows it will only recommend places that are within driving distance. What type of atmosphere do I want? Am I after a romantic night out, or am I after a bit more of a kid-friendly night out? Well, I will tell you now that I would much rather have a romantic night out, so we'll hit add there as well. Next, it tells you a preference for price range. Now, this is really useful because if you're working with a limited budget, the last thing you want is a bunch of recommendations for restaurants that might take up an entire week's salary. For me, I'm willing to go with either. But I tell you what, the average person's either going to go low price or mid-range. We'll go with mid-range. Again, once you select one, you do have to press add. Good thing is, say I've actually gone, actually I want more. I want us to change this. It's asking, I can tap back on it, tap this, and it lets me change which type of range I want. And then hit save, or you can delete the preferences as well. Now it asks me about cuisine. And I mean, what type of thing do you want? Do you want to go out to a bar and grill? Do you want to go to a barbecue? Are you a buffet kind of person? Chinese, delicatessen, diner, French, Greek, Indian, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Latin American, Mediterranean, Mexican, and so on. There's quite a lot of options here, with enough to suit anyone. I'm Indian, and I am partial to a bit of Indian food. But actually, do you know what I also really like? Is I actually really like Chinese food. And sometimes, I'm partial to just go into a bar and grill where you can have a nice meal and have a bit of a, a drink up at the same time. Now, it tells me obviously what, how far. Atmosphere, now frequency. How often am I really likely to go out? Well, I do go out quite a bit, so I'm not gonna choose never because, well, it would never give me any recommendations. I could choose occasionally or rarely. I'll go with occasionally. And if you're someone who goes out a lot and eats out a lot, choose frequently. Now we hit save. So that's just my settings for eating and drinking. Cortana's about more than just eating and drinking. It lets me specify things like events, finance, getting around. Getting around is really useful because this lets you change everything to your customized needs. There's no point giving you traffic updates if you're not a driver. And the good thing is you can specify it to tell you when it's time to leave, which is something that Google now does as well, but remember Cortana and Beta mode to have this option available already is actually a really, really good thing. Next we've got traffic updates to my favorite places, home, work, etc. 
notify me when it's time to go to work or head home. Really useful because, you know, if you're at work, who doesn't want to know when it's time to go home? I think the question should be better. If you're at work and your phone's telling you it's time to go home, why have you not left already? Moving on, when using public transport, it tells you would you like transit update, sync transit updates to your calendar events, notify me when it's time to go to my calendar events. This useful, this feature is really, really useful because you may have it set that I have got half an hour to get somewhere. But whoops, traffic, a massive traffic accident means it's going to take you an hour. You would have no way of knowing that. But actually, with Cortana and obviously Google Now and Siri, you do know. Then it also says transit updates my favourite places, notify me when it's time to go to work or head home again when using public transport versus driving, obviously. That's the key difference here. I obviously do a lot of driving. Well, I do have a car and I drive, so I have all of this tick. And I don't use a lot of public transport. But if you have public transport, you might want to change those options. And at the bottom here, you can tap on the driving and say, I prefer to drive or transit. And that will affect your settings within Cortana. Press save. Let's go back. Go into the notebook. And we'll choose some more options. So the other options include movies and TV, music, news, sports. I'm a sports fan. All sports card notifications? Sure. Score updates for your teams? Why not? And show up giving games and matches? Definitely. Add a team. That's the main thing. Now let's look at what teams are available. If I search for Manchester United, which is a big team, Manchester United, EPL. Hit add. What about if I go for something a little bit smaller? How about my local team? Northward. Nope, it's not available. So we're only looking at big teams here. Obviously, we'll type in the Jacksonville Jaguars, because I know that team. And let's be honest, everybody, wherever you're in the world, has heard of the New York Yankees, which aren't there. But we'll choose the Giants. Whoops, my bad. Moving back, hit save, and that gives you sports updates. Now if I go back to the home screen of Cortana, what you'll see here is, it says, what can I do to help you now? Today's trending stories. I have an upcoming reminder, which I've set, which I'll show you afterwards. Today's trending stories, today's recommended news, today's top headlines, latest in health use, weather right now. Pretty rags bog standard. But obviously, once you get to use Cortana a bit more, it knows more about you. And once you really dig down and customise everything to exactly how you want it to be, that's exactly what you kind of need. Especially with if I go back into travel, you can add flights, trip plans and all of that as well. And the best thing is Cortana will give you up to date flight status, which is really, really useful. The other side to Cortana is just like Siri and Google now. Voice searching. Using your voice to control the app. Asking it to do things for you, asking it to look up things for you. I could show you Cortana on its own, but we're going to give you a quick comparison of how it compares in a real world test, although it's in beta, against Google now, which has probably been doing this a lot longer. Back in a sec. And I'm back. And on the right here, we've got the Galaxy S6 Edge with Cortana, like we had a few seconds ago. But on the left, it's joined by the Vodafone Smart Ultra 6, which you'll see a review of very, very shortly. But it's a phone I really, really like, which is running Google Now. And it's on the latest version of Google Now. We could give you some demos, but the simplest way is we're going to hit the voice app button on each of these and then see how they handle with our various tasks. I've got a bunch of questions, I'm just going to do this on the fly, let's see what happens. What's the weather in New York? It's 26 degrees and sunny in New York. It's currently 24 and mostly sunny in New York. Okay, not bad. Now they're both connected to 4G. Interestingly, the Smart Ultra 6 is actually on a slightly slower network. And yeah, it seems to be a lot quicker. Again, it's worth remembering Cortana is in beta. And it's doing surprisingly well for a thing that's just in beta that Microsoft probably aren't expecting anyone to actually go and test at this present time anyway. What's the next question? Who's the first lady of the United States? According to Wikipedia, the current first lady is Michelle, Michelle Obama. Obama. At present, there are five living former First Ladies. Rosalind Carter, wife of Jimmy Carter. Nancy Reagan, widow of Ronald Reagan. Barbara Bush, wife of... And there you see it. On the left, we've got Google Now, which went to give me the entire Wikipedia description, which I probably didn't actually need. 
and Cortano, which just said, United States First Lady is Michelle Obama, with a link to Wikipedia, which is probably the better implementation, at least in my opinion. The next question we've got, and this is one I've already tested, but it's one I've tested before. And there's a reason I tested this, but I'll show you this afterwards. When was the Magna Carta signed? June 15th, 1215. According to History Channel, granted by the King of England to a group of rebellious barons and signed on the plain at Runny Mead on June 15th, 1215. The Magna Carta is widely viewed as one of the most important legal documents in history. And right. There is a reason I asked this question. And that is because I've done some testing of Cortana previously. And my testing was with Cortana on Windows Phone. Now, when you ask Cortana on Windows Phone when the Magna Carta was signed, you get June 19th, 1215, which is technically the correct answer as well as June 15th, but that's an entire different story. The reason I chose this is because obviously I've done some testing of Cortana before I bought you this video. And the biggest thing I've noticed is the number of voice responses on Cortana for Android is a lot lower than the voice responses available when you use the same searches in Cortana for Windows Phone. Again, it's worth remembering Cortana for Android is in beta mode, which makes a huge difference to all of this. Let's move on and ask another question. What time is it in Venezuela? The time in Venezuela is 6.25 p.m. It's 6.25 p.m. in Venezuela. Really quick, both are really simple, but you can do things like that. Next up, where's the nearest Costco? Here are addresses for Costco. Here are five locations for Costco near you. Now it's quite interesting, they both give us the exact same answers pretty much. What is really sim interesting though, is that Cortana brings in Yelp reviews. Not so useful with Costco, because let's be honest, you're pretty much going to get roughly similar experience in most Costco's. What it does going to be interesting for is restaurants, where Google will give you re reviews when you go into it in a bit more detail. Cortana tells you there, in a heartbeat, with stars, what the reviews are. In this case, the Costco in Watford has got four, four out of five stars thanks to 14 Yelp reviews. I've got another one for you. Will I need an umbrella tomorrow? No, rain is not expected tomorrow in Pinna. The forecast is 24 degrees and mostly sunny. Okay, Cortana, that's very strange because you definitely recognised what I asked. We'll ask Cortana again. Will I need an umbrella tomorrow? It's hard to say for sure, Narave. Here's the forecast for tomorrow. Okay, so that's quite interesting. We had to ask the question again, but really strange. But they've all come up really similar. I think going, Google is, no, you do not need an umbrella. Why would you ask such an absurd question? Whereas Cortana's like, it's hard to say. What you might have just heard is, Cortana referred to me by my name. Although it's not Nerev, it's Nerev. But hey, I can forgive the fact that you at least pronounced it as Nerev and not some of the other stuff, which one of them includes Nirabi, which a lot of people seem to do. Moving on, the last question I've got for these two is... What is the stock price of Microsoft? Microsoft Corporation closed down 0.09% today Microsoft at $46.62. Down 0.09% today. Okay, so there's a bit of a crossover there with the responses, but pretty much they gave us the exact same information. In fact, they did, except Microsoft said, Google now said it, it closed at 46.62, sorry, it closed down 0.09% at 46.62, and, and Cortana went, it closed at 46.62, which is down 0.9%, or something like that. Anyway, you can see that it will give, give you the same amount of information. So there you have what was meant to be a quick look at Cortana on Android in its first earliest leaked form, but actually turned into quite a long video, let's be honest. Hopefully you found this enjoyable, a little bit entertaining, I do try, even if I may not always get it right, and informative. But the main thing to do was to show you that actually Cortana for Android is really not very bad. 
we'd expect that the final release version is gonna be a little bit more stable and a little bit better than this. But overall, Microsoft has done really well with their first beta app. Normally see we beta apps that crash, and although it has crashed once, performance is pretty stable. Sure, Cortana for Android isn't as good right now as it is for Windows, but that's probably to be expected. Hopefully, this will change as it nears release and eventually does get released. But overall, I'm really quite impressed. Would I use Cortana over Google now? Well, it's quite difficult to say, and the main reason is Google now is easily a lot more easily accessible than Cortana is. However, it's not, it's not saying that I don't mind opening an app to ask Cortana questions and even just have a conversation. Because you can do things like this. Cortana, will you marry me? don't think that's in the cards for us. Rejection from a computer. With sass like that, what more could you need? Thanks for watching. If you found this in informative, enjoyed it, or you're just in a good mood, give us a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to hit subscribe because we've got so much more content coming your way. Let me know what you think of Cortana for Android in the comments below. And guys, remember, it's in beta. Stay tuned to androidauthority.com and our channel for a lot more on all the latest smartphones because we are your source for all things Android.